Okay, hello and welcome everyone. This video is going to be a little bit different because I am waiting for waiting for my other videos to upload for the Intermediate Micro um, ones. And, but I've got something interesting to talk about, which is example of peak load pricing. So the idea that company or firm wants to have higher prices during peak demand and then lower prices during off-peak times. So the reason why they would want to do this is, well, when you have really strong demand for whatever it is that you're trying to sell, you want to take advantage of the fact that you have a high group of demanders, a relatively inelastic demand, and are willing to pay a substantial markup. Then when you don't, if you have, especially if you have like a really low marginal cost, it can make sense to offer the price or to have a relatively low price so as to be able to capture whoever is willing to buy the product during the off peak times because some revenue is better than zero. So I'll come back to that in a second. First, I want to come up with the example, like it's sort of the general benefit to consumers or to economic agents associated with like being different and doing things different than other people. So here's like a traffic example. And the idea, so here what I've got is the route from Pittsburgh International Airport to the Phipps Conservatory, which is in Oakland, which is next to uh, Pitt and Carnegie Mellon, kind of halfway in between. And so this is a route that I'm super familiar with coming from Clinton to like right between Carnegie Mellon and Pitt. If you were to leave Monday at 7.30 in the morning, you are going to spend 45 minutes to an hour and 20 minutes in the car. That's optimistic. If there's an accident, you're looking at 90 minutes to two hours uh, going through the Fort Pitt tunnel. And so, okay, what if you were to leave at a little bit of a different time? So what if you try to get off the peak? Well, oh, seven o'clock, 40 to over 10 minutes. So leaving 30 minutes early did nothing. What about leaving a full hour early? 35 to 55 minutes, maybe, right? What if you leave another, what if you leave like two hours early? So we started at 7.30, what if you leave at 5.30? Oh, now this looks reasonable. So if you're willing to get up early and drive early, you can make this in 24 to 35 minutes, actually relatively reliably. What's going on here? Well, you're either gonna bear substantial cost waiting in traffic and that, is maddening well dizzying not i was gonna say maddening it's mostly dizzying like i get car sick going like stomping on my brake and stomping on my brake and stomping on my brake to go down the hill so the other thing you could do is you get up really early and then you bear the cost associated with being up super early but you don't have to bear co extra costs in the car the same thing on the return trip and so that was essentially that's essentially my strategy there okay so another thing in terms of going when other people don't. This is the Echo Canyon Trailhead, which is at Camelback, which is in Scottsdale, well, Paradise Valley, Arizona. So this takes us to Camelback. And this is a really popular hiking area, really super popular. And so if you come here on a weekend in the morning, you're not gonna be able to park there. And people circle the parking lot. And um, so if you want to if you want to come to the Echo Canyon Trailhead, where, when you have to come, you have to get here really early. You have to get here at sunrise, and people figure this out. And so, one of the things that happens during the summer is sun rises earlier and earlier again. So if people want to get up at like four thirty to come to the trailhead, then you might find a parking spot, but then you're bearing the cost of getting up super early. Um, so last time I was so usually I don't actually ever park here. So I stay at this Omni, which is a short run in from over here and then I just run in and then I come up and I'm like the last time I was there I was walking out and four cars asked me if I was leaving like they wanted to follow me to my parking spot and so I found that kind of well both set, like sad and comical but on the other hand like that's kind of what you have to do if you're going during the peak time to be able to find a parking spot is like ask everybody leaving and they'd be super disappointed that I was running out uh, last time I was there, actually, I went during an off-peak time. So I went early in the morning and like a weekday. So I had, um, I think it was like sp was it spring spring break or something like that, whatever it was. And these guys, Toronto FC, so the MLS team in Toronto was were there. And they had their, they parked their bus. I didn't know who they were originally. It's so like I was coming down, I was coming down the mountain. And I saw all these guys in uniforms wearing Toronto FC coming up, running fast up the mountain and group which is super unusual 
But sure enough, get down to the bottom and there's their Toronto FC bus. So their tour bus, I don't know, I guess looks like they had a, like a West Coast trip or something. So decided to do some training on the mountain. So that was that was interesting. And they were thinking just like me, which is like, hey, if you want to bring if you wanna bring a group of professional athletes to train on this mountain and actually get a decent workout, you have to go when there's not many other people going there. Because otherwise, like most people don't run up, most people don't run up Camelback. Some people do, some of us do. But anyway, so, oh, so the other example is if you are willing to go during unusual times to an area, you can get a really good deal. So for instance, like I like staying at this resort. It's a five-star resort and I don't pay the five-star price. Why? Because I'll go there during times when other people don't want to go. So for instance, like if you go July 3rd to July 4th, it's like $134 a night, right? Usually, if you want to go there during a peak time, it's a multiple. It's a substantial multiple of that amount, especially depending on what room you want to stay at. They have a presidential suite that's like five thousand dollars. I would never stay there, but some people would. And the point is, well, you could if you're if you're willing to bear a hundred and ten degree. If you're willing to bear a hundred and ten degree weather in Phoenix or hundred fifteen degree weather in Phoenix, you could stay there for you know one forty three. Uh, 143 dollars a night or whatever so w- why well this is the off-peak time and so if you are willing to go to the desert during the time when most people are trying to escape the desert the time when like phoenix locals are going to the going to the mountains of the north or going to colorado or utah or something like that if you're willing to go to the desert during that time you can be rewarded by willing similarly as being willing to get up early in the morning and bear the costs of uh, being up super early, you're rewarded by a much quicker commute. So, Or if you're willing to go to the trailhead during a time when other people aren't there, you're rewarded with you know parking spaces. So um, that's kind of that's kind of cool. Oh, there's one other thing I wanted to do. So like uh, before I before I made this video, I was showing I was showing In and Out Burger. I was looking I was looking up In and Out Burger. I was trying to find, trying to find an in and out, in and out burger. And so one of the things I realized when I did this is that you can time travel, you can time travel with Google. So, oh, this is not the one. This I think this is the one I go to. I don't know if this is this is going to be a time traveling one or not. This is not the one I go to. Maybe it'll let me time travel with Google. How does this work? Okay, so you go into Google Maps, and I should actually show. Oh, here's in and out burger. I. I'm starving, so I should not look at that right now. Oh man, I wish I could, wish I could fly there today. So can't do that. More important things to do this week. But look at the date here. This is January 2019. Let's just take a tour of Phoenix. You can see the Valley of the Sun with me. This is beautiful. I love these mountains. And now we're in October 2017. We have traveled. We have time traveled with Google. I think that's cool. So anyway, look at these mountains here. That's beautiful. So that's the other thing is like if you are wired like I am to think of Southern Arizona as being super beautiful, everybody else thinks it's like everybody I talk to thinks about it being like dry and dead. No, no, it's the desert is full of life and it's it's a wonderful place. But if you are willing to enjoy places that other people don't, you get a huge benefit because the costs are so much lower for for those of you, I don't know why I just made myself dizzy turning this around, but go ahead and conclude. Check out my videos. Hopefully they uploaded. And hey, look, we now we time traveled to April 2018. How cool is that? All right. That's enough of this.